This is the uh, D8 file management initiative uh, core conversation. So hopefully you're in the right place. Um, and if you like, I messed up the date that I put on my slides. I have to kind of quick it, fix it. So that's like a good representation of my Photoshop skills there. <laughs> Um, uh, if you'd like to follow along with these slides, this is my first time uh, trying with an HTML5 uh, slide deck. Um, so, ooh, Dave does fancy stuff. Um, so if you want to follow the link right there, if you're having trouble seeing this, and it should work on mobile too, fingers crossed. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Dave. This is my first time in Europe. Uh, I'm enjoying myself immensely. Um, I'm a senior engineer at Palantir.net. Uh, I'm pretty easy to find because I use my real name everywhere. So I'm DaveReed.Drupal.org. I'm at DaveReed on Twitter. On IRC, I'm Dave Reed. I have a pattern there. Um, and I also am kind of famous for maintaining a lot of modules. Uh, and so how I kind of got started with file management is I started uh, helping out with the media module uh, uh, at Palantir. And so, yeah, so the mother says, other things like I like American football. I had to add that for here. Um, I have some cats. One you might see later in the presentation. Um, and I'm going to be a new dad in October. And I just like sharing that. So. so I like to start talking about this um, from a media initiative. I know you're like, this is wait, this is file management. But we have to take a step back. Um, because last summer, uh, Acquia Palantir and the maintainer of the media module, Aaron Winborn, got together. And we had like a week-long sprint where we locked ourselves in a conference room. And we kind of decided that Drupal Core is starting these initiatives, like configuration management, that kind of thing. Um, and we have this big like ecosystem of media modules. There's media, OEmbed, YouTube, all the stuff that works with media. And it kind of lags behind some time, catches up, lags behind, catches up. Um, so we wanted to start this like unofficial initiative. Um, for media. And so kind of what are the goals of this initiative? Um, the first thing we did was kind of uh, get a, a roadmap defined together uh, for the media module, not so much for everything else, but just kind of, you know, what cool stuff are we looking to add to media if you want to help out? Um, and it's kind of community decided. Uh, we also have a kind of a small media bug squad that goes on now, uh, inspired by views. So it just kind of helps control the issue queue. Uh, we have bi-weekly meetings, just like core initiatives, um, in our Drupal-Media IRC channel, where we discuss what we're working on, what other things are kind of coming up, uh, organizing for sprints, that kind of stuff. Uh, we also want to encourage new people to get involved, um, just to kind of help pump some life into it um, by communicating, so people can see, oh, people are working on it and stuff. Um, and it's also kind of our commitment as maintainers that we're going to still be here and not go away or someone will be here to take care of it, and not just like Acquia is working on it, or Palantir is working on it now. Um, it's kind of more community owned. Uh, so one of the things that we decided there was that we wanted to, uh, well, this is I decided. Uh, I wanted to make like a little subset of the media initiative called uh, file management, specifically targeted for core. Um, so it's the, it's the FMI initiative, which kind of looks like FML, which is one of my favorite abbreviations. Um, <laughs> So let's go a little bit more into this. This is highly focused more towards core. Um, we want to fix some kind of what we consider bad assumptions that core makes about files. Uh, we want to provide a UI for adding, editing, and deleting files, uh, not just from a node form. We want you to be able to do it as like, these are the files on your site. And we'll show, I'll show that a little bit later. Uh, we want files to be fieldable, too. They're already entities now. Uh, but it makes a whole lot of sense if you think of stuff like captions, thumbnails for video files. Um, all of this kind of data can be fields on the files directly so that anytime you use that file, it can be reused and they can use that data. Uh, we will also want to add a little bit of a better file access API uh, and add a metadata API. So things like image dimensions, we're considering metadata that we would want to support. Um, things like audio length. Uh, a video link, that kind of stuff. Uh, we also want to kind of encourage support for HTML5 for audio and video. Um, how exhaustive that'll be, we'll see. Um, and also encouraging kind of uh, remote data with uh, Drupal, because right now with files, they're all kind of local. 
Um, so how are we going to accomplish this? Um, right now, we kind of have a, a roadmap and a schedule for the file management initiative that kind of lists what we're trying to do. And I'll give you kind of the shorter version of it. Um, so the big part of how we're going to do this is we're working on it right now, and it's called the file entity module. And it's available for Drupal 7. You can use it. It's in an unstable state. That's just my nice way of saying you shouldn't use this if you can't support it. Um, but it's basically, we're putting everything we want to put into core in this module. Um, so right now, we're kind of working on completing those features, getting it uh, finished off. Uh, and that also involves uh, adding test coverage, because we're not good developers with file entity. We haven't been adding unit tests. I know. You can throw tomatoes later at me. Um, we want to clean things up. There's uh, some things that are using uh, Ctools exportables that we're going to have to clean up and convert to CMI uh, if we want to make this for Drupal 8. And then once we've got all this stuff ready, we basically want to merge this module with the file module in core. That's simply pretty much what our goal is. It seems kind of low. Like a, like we, we could be ambitious, but there's the reality of that we only have so much time left. Um, and so this is what we'd like to do. And we're thinking it's best accomplished by doing it in contrib first, kind of like Spark, and working to move that into core. Uh, and we have other major issues with uh, core, some not quite as major. And those can pretty much be solved at any time. Um, so they don't have to wait on file entity at all. Um, so I mentioned bad assumptions in core. Um, so kind of going through those, it assumes that all files are always local and always writable. Um, but if you have things like Flickr or YouTube, which conceptually is a file, yes, um, those are remote and not necessarily writable. Um, so we want core to be able to easily work with those. Right now, we have to write our own stream wrapper for it. And we would like that stream wrapper to maybe be in core and assumptions about stream wrappers and, uh, and image styles. Generating an image style from Flickr, you probably want to store that image style locally on your system, but leave the file remote. Uh, so we want to enable that kind of thing. Um, it also assumes that files will never be reused. And this is not a bad assumption for what we had. Um, we basically converted image fields into core. Um, and it's if you wanted to use the same file, you just had to upload it twice. You can't really reference it before. Um, there's not too much we're going to be doing about this with the file management. That's more of a media module issue, um, which we're probably going to be leaving in contrib for Drupal 8. Um, it also assumes, so core tracks file usage. So every time you attach a file to a node, it says, OK, I use this file on this node one time. And if you were to remove the file from that node, it says, oh, this file is, is used zero times now. I'm going to delete it, um, which is handy without the assumption that you're never going to reuse files ever again. Um, so now if you wanted to reuse that file later, it's gone from your system. And you have to find it and re-upload it. Um, so that's something we're going to look at. Uh, and another interesting thing is image fields are actually a special case. Uh, so Core has file and image fields. And these are entity reference. Um, and so when you have a node reference or a user reference, you don't have an article reference field that only references articles. You have an, a node reference or an entity reference that references a specific type. So we kind of have these two dual fields in core um, just so that we could use different widgets. But why can't we just use a file field and use an image widget on top of it? Makes sense. Um, so one of the things we've done already, um, a lot of this includes uh, a few things in core. Uh, file delete was kind of a fun thing where if a file was in use, you couldn't actually delete a file. Um, this is an API function. It shouldn't care about usage. It should just delete a file no matter what. Um, so we fixed that. That's kind of a small win. Uh, we also helped convert uh, file entities to actual objects uh, and using PSR0. Um, just kind of as the general core keeping up there. Um, and we've almost finished with file entity. It's looking in a really good state. We've got just a couple major things left. Um, so those kind of blockers are, uh, we've got one in core, which is right now file entities are owned by system module. We actually want to switch that to the file module, because that'll help us merge in the file entity module. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, 
we're almost there on a file access API in the file entity module. But that should be complete, hopefully tonight, by tomorrow morning. Um, we want to add the file metadata API. We're still kind of not sure on how it's going to be stored. Is it a key value? Is it a table with a image width column and image height column? Do you have to specify what columns there are, or should Core just have a table that you can store stuff in? Um, we also know make file types configurable. So right now, uh, and you'll see in the demo, they're kind of predetermined based on MIME type. So if you upload an, a PDF file, it's actually going to be called an application file type, because uh, the MIME type for PDF is application slash PDF. Uh, it works pretty well for like, if you have like, images and video, because they all go to image and video. Uh, but people don't really consider like PDFs applications. They're more documents. Um, so we need, to make, we need to make sure that we make this configurable uh, so that people can use it how they want. What we may do is just ship with a default like plugin determine what, to determine what a file type is that works by mind type, and it could be swapped out if people want it to be. That just may be the easy way. Uh, and of course, we have some accessibility issues with making sure we support uh, alt and title tags on images all, at all times, um, and documentation as well. There's not a whole lot of in-module documentation. Or there is a lot of code documentation, but not so much in the UI. And we may need to make sure that we have that. Uh, and some other tasks that aren't necessarily required. Um, the way that you configure file types and file display is a little bit weird in the file entity module. I mean, once you get over like the big hump, it, it kind of helps, and you, you know how to configure it. Um, but if we kind of go with this and put it into core as it is, um, I know there's going to be lots of people going to be like, what the hell is this? And they won't know how to configure it. Um, so we want to take a look at it. May, maybe we can make it easier. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and we also want to make this file usage system more optional um, so that once it's easier for modules like media to not have to figure out how to not delete your files when core wants you to. Um, so we'll figure that out. And a couple nice to haves that we would like to do but aren't as high a priority, but would they would be kind of the nice flashy things. Um, it'd be nice to be able to support drag and drop upload uh, like WordPress does. Um, or multiple files, so you can just drag multiple files, drag them and upload, or use the multiple file widget, some kind of multiple support. Uh, right now it's just single only. Uh, it'd be nice to have a kind of standardized entity reference module in core. Uh, even better, we'd be able to have inline entity forms. So if you attach a file to a node, you'd be able to edit the fields for that file right straight in there. That would be really nice, because right now we're having to like put a modal up and it doesn't really work very well. Um, uh, related to that, it'd be nice to have a modal API in core for the media browser, but eh, we, can, we can deal with that if it's not there for now. Um, and eventually it would be nice to have media in core, but like I said, we're still kind of working with the UI. We want to put in this, a lot of this foundation of file management in core. Um, and so we can live with media being in contrib for Drupal 8, um, but we'd probably like to target that for Drupal 9 in core. Um, and another great thing that would be interesting is, so if you have a title field on an image, that title is always the same wherever that image is used or a caption. But what if you wanted to change the caption for an image when you embed it on a certain node? Um, right now, we don't really support that. So being able to override fields on an entity when it's used on an instance basis, that's a lot of terms, I know. Um, but that would be really nice. Like, say, I want to attach this image, but I want to use a different caption for it here. So, like, how do we work that out? It would be nice to have that. Um, what kind of help do we need? It's kind of the typical initiative help. Uh, we need people that are familiar with simple test because um, we're lacking documentation uh, and uh, tests. So we can just throw you at here. Here's the functionality we need to test for. We can give you some guidelines for what it probably should do. Go write the test. That'd be really great. Um, because we were lazy and didn't do it before. Uh, I know. Uh, we have a couple architectural decisions. I mentioned the uh, metadata API and how it should be stored. If you have opinions on that, go ahead and feel and uh, come and talk to me later. Uh, we also need patch writers. We have a couple issues in the queue. Um, it would help if you're familiar with the file entity module or get familiar with it tonight. 
Um, you know, that way you can kind of not be, have to be onboarded uh, since we're sprinting tomorrow. Um, and we, we also just need patch testers. That doesn't, you don't have to have familiarity with too much. Just be able to see, apply a patch, see if it works, test some things out, click around, that kind of thing. Uh, and again, documentation. If you are kind of familiar with the module and want to help just write some uh, in-page documentation, that'd be great. And so, when can you actually help? Uh, well, you can help out any time. That would be really great. Um, but we are actually having a code sprint tomorrow. So if you're interested, you should come. Um, I mentioned we have our bioliquid meetings. And so our next one is next Thursday uh, at uh, hour 20 UTC, uh, which is like 3 p.m. Central Time if you're in the US. Um, so yeah, it'd be great if you can come uh, meet us in IRC and just kind of chat uh, if you want to get in. Way to help. Uh, code sprints all day tomorrow. Yep. Where? where? Yeah, sure. Uh, so thank you, Jess. Um, the sprint will be in the big keynote room um, in the Westin. So, and they'll, have, they'll have split it up and we'll have signs hopefully to go for each initiative and who's doing which sprint. So, we'll hopefully have a big file management sign. Uh, and uh, again, we have our IRC channel, Drupal Media. You can stop in there anytime. I'm always there pretty much during the day. Um, so here, uh, I'll kind of show you uh, what the file D module does right now. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, so this is Drupal 7, not Drupal 8, I know. Um, and so the basic parts of file on C uh, the first one we'll go into is uh, there's this add file straight from, like you do add content. So you hit add file. And you can ignore the remote and web. That's stuff added by media. Um, so right now you just basically get a default upload a file. Um, so I can choose a file. And that is my cat, Rodney. He has his own Twitter account if you want to follow him. And I'm going to hit Submit. Did he run for the DA? He did run for the DA, yes. Did he run next time? No, non-humans have not been allowed anymore. Um, so I uploaded the file, and now I see that I've got a couple of fields on this image. Uh, so I can just, like you do with nodes, I can say, uh, well, this was taken by me. And of course, I have to tag everything with cats. So, and here. I can see basically all the files that are uploaded on my site. Um, so my new one that I've uploaded is right there at the top. Uh, I can see what type it is, image slash JPEG, uh, what size it is, who uploaded it, etc. Uh, et uh, I can go back and edit it uh, or cancel. I can delete it from here. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Can you continue the directory that it goes into tomorrow? Not currently, no. This would just go straight in the uh, root files directory or what the default file system is. So that's probably another thing we do need to look at. So um, you can define it from field level. Yeah, if you're uploading it from a field, you can define where it goes. Yeah. Um, but this is more just like I'm uploading a file to be used later. So uh, you can just delete the file from here. Uh, we're actually going to be adding a little usage tab onto this file details so you can actually see where this file is being used to, um, which is kind of nice. And you can also bulk edit. Um, so I can uh, bulk delete. If you have the multi-form module installed, you can actually bulk edit. Uh, and maybe this is the thing that is better for if v VBO gets into core too, would be nice. Um, but here I can edit multiple images at once. Um, but that's probably won't make it over to core because it doesn't since it requires another contrib module. So I'll go over to the file types. So you can kind of see this. These are the predefined file type bundles. So we have application, audio, image, uh, text, and video. Um, and you can manage the fields just like normal. Um, but the one thing that right now, you can't actually add a new file type. That's what I was talking about. We wanted to make that this customizable, probably. Um, the manage display is kind of as you would expect. Um, the one thing that's a little odd is we have 
and this is kind of the, uh, the confusing aspect, is there's two separate things. There's manage display, which is managing how the fields are displayed for this file, and then there's manage file display, which actually manages how the file itself is displayed, because it's not actually a field, it's just the raw entity. Because um, when we have a video file type, it may be a YouTube, it may be a local file, um, it may be a, I don't know, a, a Flickr video. Um, so in the managed file display, we have this kind of concept of fallback. Um, so you, manage, you uh, allow several different types of way for this file to be output. So uh, here with image, I've got just raw image displayed with an image style. Uh, or if it's an O-embed image, like uh, from Flickr or another image service that's external, uh, it'll display it that way. And then you manage uh, which order it tries them in. So it tries the first thing. And if it says, no, I can't display it that way, it goes to the next one. Um, so this is kind of a little bit confusing process. I mean, it, it's really flexible is, is one thing. But is, is, the, is this the best thing to put into core? If you have ideas or alternate ideas, they, I would really love to hear it because I don't have any better ideas for this. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just uh, what this would be looking to add. Um, we'd also be looking to add basic um, audio and video HTML5 formatters enabled by default. So if you uploaded an MP3 file, you could actually play it with core without having to install any additional module uh, or upload a, a video file. If it's, if it's supported in your browser, it'd be, you could play it. It'd be kind of nice just to have that out of the box. Um, but yeah, that's kind of just what a file entity does. It just it provides this UI for adding, editing, deleting, listing. Um, stuff like media can go in and add stuff onto this. So it can add like a thumbnail listing, um, which you can see more pictures of my cat here. Um, and it does stuff uh, like we saw in the add file screen. Um, so I could add a file from a remote source uh, or from OMBED or that kind of thing. One thing we're actually playing with recently is actually uploading an archive. So you'd actually upload a zip of files, and Drupal would copy it over, extract it, and add all the files that were in the archive for you, which is kind of nice. I, I don't consider that really multiple upload functionality, but I guess I could, technically. Um, like, yeah, you can zip your files up, then it'll work. Um, uh, sorry? Are yes. Um, not right now. Um, that's um, so the question is, are we supporting the, the multiple property on the upload uh, form, uh, which is added by HTML5? Uh, and we're not right now. That may be the best way that we add that multiple support. Um, but we'd love to have someone, if they're interested in writing a patch for that for core, there's an open issue for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead over here. We're going to make those decisions tomorrow. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so, any outstanding decisions, we can make them tomorrow with the code sprints. Uh, yes, right there. So this HTML5 thing, there's actually a module for that from Drupal 7. And did you look at that? Or do you know what about it? Uh, which module are you talking about? Uh, for multiple file upload with HTML5. Well, yeah, it, it exists as another module, but we'd like it in core. OK, so that's you're aware of it in core. Yeah, I've, I've seen it, but I would love to see a patch for core yeah. for it. Yes, again. And then um, it often happens that you have uh, files that are not known to Drupal, and that Drupal assumes the file to be somewhere where it's not because of some stupid stuff that happened, like an upgrade that, that went wrong, or uh, maybe a rollback of the database, or something that, that someone did. And um, do you have a plan for that to um, improve that to be aware of Drupal, or do you just think that as of now it's kind of okay? Um, so I think that's just kind of okay as it is right now. I mean, I don't really have a plan for how to work with that. So, uh, If you have questions, you can come up to the mic, too. Um, that way I don't have to repeat them, but I'll repeat them for you, too. So. So. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned uh, on your nice-to-have list uh, inline editing for file entity. Mm -hmm. and did you... Uh, uh, meant to use the inline editing the commerce guys for 
demoing uh, in their Kickstart version two? Um, that would be nice to have, but again, we would need to shift that into core to be make it available. Um, okay. You know, it may be something that we support with Contrib then uh, for Drupal eight. So yeah, that's definitely something that we would look at. It's it's been on the list of things that could possibly work for that. So yeah, I've I've I've, I've liked what I've seen with that module. Hi. Um, have you considered at all um, addressing the ongoing WYSIWYG embedded file links and the problems that we have with moving sites around and the old references that we end up in HTML, which I think is a Drupal file management problem mm -hmm. which keeps on coming back. Is there a scope or is this out of scope for that particular problem? Uh, so there's two problems. One is actually getting the files in sync between servers. Um, the second one we can actually solve now in Drupal 8 because uh, entities use UUIDs by default. Um, so if we embed those in a syntax with WYSIWYG, we'd actually reference them by UUID. Um, I mean, we can't do much if the file doesn't exist, um, but we can at least make sure that we're referencing the same thing. Um, and, and what media does is so it, it references a file by file ID, which almost works the same, um, and then generates the URL to it based on that on the server that it lives on. So it doesn't actually embed a hard URL in the text. Um, it actually converts it on the fly. Uh, on the fly. So that, I think that's okay. probably a good solution. Um, I know Sun has some ideas too on an inline API for how to ref, uh, use that as well. Oh, that's um, nice to hear. Thanks. So, yep. Um, I don't have a question. I just wanted to point out something um, that has to do with something he said earlier in his slides about how you can help with his initiative. Um, he mentioned all these, did a very good job of mentioning the ways that you can help. And one of the first things up there was um, he wanted simple test writers. Now you may say to yourself, I'm, I don't know how to write a simple test. That's also a solvable problem. So if tomorrow morning you want to help, if tomorrow you want to help Dave Reed write simple tests, you can come in the morning to my sprint where we will teach you how to write a simple test. And then in the afternoon you can go and work on media. So keep that That's in mind. That's a great and, system. And, and all, you know, all the other things that were up there too, things like documentation and patch testing, stuff like that, if you aren't sure that you're confident in doing those things, come in the morning, learn from us, and then go help Dave. When and where? Um, in in the, same, the same area, in the keynote room area, which will hopefully be divided into separate rooms so that when I talk loudly, I do not disturb the people who are working on his and all their initiatives in the morning, but in, in Valsal AB, which is the keynote room. So yeah, again, if you're if you're ready to dive in with helping out, by all means, come uh, find my table in the morning. But if you're not so much, not so sure, uh, find Jess. Uh, it'd be a great way to get introduced, and then come join me in the afternoon. So, is there an idea about files having a language? Like, if you have different PDFs and then you have different versions of that in different languages, um, will will you make multiple file entities and each has a language, or should we use some kind of entity translation? I would hope we would want to use entity translation, but the problem is that you would have to provide a different file as well. Um, so we're kind of getting <laughs> into an in inception kind of thing where you have a file field on a file. Um, yeah, yeah. So it, code. it supports languages out of the box. You can associate a file with a language, um, but how to actually translate that, that may be a different issue. Um, and we don't really have a good answer for that right now. All right, we'll do one more question and we'll call it a break. Um, should the, the file field really be an, an entity reference field, do you think? Uh, yes, it should. Good. <laughs> uh, it should just use a different widget. Yeah, okay, awesome. All right, uh, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow, hopefully. So, yeah.